Welcome to My Mentor. This is a platform that seeks to provide world-class mentoring content by leveraging on the skills, experiences, wisdom and knowledge of established professionals, leaders, business people and entrepreneurs. We seek to inspire, empower and challenge professionals and individuals to reach the next level in their professional, business and career leadership journeys. Welcome to the next level. Shara Kwasha, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, really, really appreciate it and I'm um, really looking forward to this conversation. So let's kick off with your educational background. You studied computer science uh, in Zimbabwe. Yes. Tell us about that experience. So I started business studies in computer science, uh, which is half banking and finance and the other half was uh, computer science, uh, by chance really. I wanted to do my um, CA, I wanted to go the CA route. Okay. So I applied to a couple of universities in Zimbabwe, the National University of Science and Technology. Yeah. Got uh, admitted into their Bachelors of Accounting program. Um, went there for a registration. Um, and then I came back home and I had been um, admitted by the University of Zimbabwe to do a Bachelor of Business Studies and Computing Science. Okay. Uh, with the way that the economy and my family was set up at the time, the uh, National University of Science and Technology was in Bloyo, which is 500, 600 kilometers away from my hometown. And the University of Zimbabwe is just right around the corner, really. Mm. So the, the decision was kind of made for me. Yeah. Um, I ended up going to the University of Zimbabwe to do the... Um, business studies and computing science. Any regrets that you ended up not being a CA? Um, I think about it sometimes, yeah. but no regrets really. I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that I think it's cool. It's something that I think it's nice. I took a different path and it has really worked out for me. Um, but I think to an extent is the reason why I ended up at some point doing my MBA because I, yes. I still felt I needed to have that side of me. Yeah um fulfilled yeah um so i think the mba gave me an opportunity to also explore yes, yes. Um, that side of the world we'll, we'll talk about the mba and uh, the fact that you are currently uh, head of risk governance at apsa uh, i want to just go back a little bit to your upbringing in zimbabwe and the yeah. education system there if you speak to most people that come from zimbabwe uh, people you have met in in university and the caliber of people that you sit with in class from there uh, it gives you the impression that the education system in Zimbabwe is very, very good. What would you say is the secret to that? Look, I think, I think the, the system was set up very intentionally. I think it's one of the most empowering uh, education systems that I've come across. I think the intention was to empower um, students who go through it. Um, so... If you benchmark it with um, what we have um, across the continent and, well, to an extent, what we have across the world, it, it, it stacks up really um, highly with, uh, in terms of, of, of quality. So I think the first thing to figure is the intention. What are you trying to get out of, of the system? Because I think that allows you to make assumptions uh, going forward that work with, within the system. So. Um, when I look at the assumptions that the, 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 the Zimbabwean system is built on against, say, what the South African system is, is, is built on, I, I think I have some conversations with people where I say, I think in South Africa, we are set up to assume uh, that we are sending kids away to parents who can read and write, mm. which might be the opposite of what actually is prevailing on the ground, given where we have come from um, as a country. So I think the intention is very important yeah. so that you can be deliberate about the choices and the assumptions and all the decisions that you then make uh, going forward. And, and the, you know, the economic political landscape, has it had any impact on the level of quality of, of the education system that, Look, that you see now? I, I do not have the details, but I, I would assume it has. Um, I think the grades that have been coming out 
from examinations, public examinations in the last few years have not been as impressive as they, they have been before. Um, I think the country has also started registering um, a number, um, an increased number of, of dropouts of kids who are unable to pay or whose um, environment is not in, in, in enabling them to, 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 to be in school and participate fully. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's, it's always a factor. When the economics uh, is not going well, yeah. you, you are bound to find it spilling into, into other spheres. Yes, yeah. So I'm sure that has happened. Um, I think the experts can actually give us an indication of mm. the numbers, but there's bound to be an impact. And what was it like growing up in Zimbabwe, if you look back, reflect back on your earlier years? It was different. It was a different time, right? Um, and, and especially for me. So I think to step back a little bit, uh, both my parents were born in Mozambique. Okay. And uh, they emigrated to Zimbabwe at different times. Um, due to... Before well, they were married? Before they got married with, yes. their, with their... Well, my mother with her family and my dad, yes. um, oh, he was just on his own. I think yeah. he, he, he went to Zim when he was only 12 years old. Wow. Um, well, because of the conditions that were prevailing in Mozambique at yes. the time. Uh, so he taught himself to read and write. I don't know how he did that, but I think he was genius. Uh, for, for, for That's where you get it from, eh? <laughs> My mother would argue that I get it from her. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I get it from both sides of the family. Yeah. So, um, so it was kind of different, right? We didn't, we didn't have an extended family in the sense of h how other people yes. would have it because, yeah. you know, um, the family had just, just moved into 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 the country so i think uh, a core of 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 my upbringing is having a small family uh, and a small group of people around you that you can really rely on so as a result that's one of the things that drive me uh, drive me and give me the drive to do uh, the things that i do um and 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 how i do it so commitment and, and reliability is a big thing for me. I always try to do what I say I am going to do, and I kind of have the same expectation for, for people who are around. That's interesting. And I know that uh, in 2018, you were in, uh, in the States, and uh, you bumped into uh, the finance minister of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. How did it happen? So. <laughs> So this was during a time when we were, um, I was part of an MBA uh, program. I had, um, uh, I had gone to, to Atlanta um, for, uh, well, for, for a tour or for, for one of the modules that we were yes. doing there. And then we just thought, um, me and my wife, it would be a good idea to extend that stay um, and have a holiday of sorts, right? So I was in New York. Um, I met my wife in New York, and uh, on the day we got there, um, the friends that we were visiting said, well, the Zimbabwean president was uh, in New York for the UN General Summit, and he's uh, having an audience with uh, the Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Um, so we, we, we attended that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, we um, <sighs> there were a few minutes to to chat to the, to the people that had uh, attended. So I got an opportunity to approach um, the minister. Well, there were a lot of people there and uh, I kept persisting mm -hmm. uh, to speak to him. So eventually what happened is he said, walk with me uh, because he was on, on his way to- Why did to you pick room. you and all the other people were with you? Uh, look- Because you're tall and you could see it clearly. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. It's probably because I was wearing casual clothes okay. in a room with, uh, full of people who were wearing yeah. suits and, and business. Remember, this wasn't part of the plan. We, yes. we were visiting friends. We got there in, in, within 10 minutes of getting there. They said, no, actually, we need to leave and we need to do it. So I was ill prepared for, for this meeting. I was but you approached him. What made you decide, I need to approach him. I need to say something to him. Look, I, 
identity is a big thing for me, and Zimbabwe is um, one of my first um, loves in, yes. in, in, in the world. I really love the country, and if I think I have an opportunity to voice my opinion mm. and influence what goes on in the, in the country, by all means, I will try and, and take it. So I think more than anything, that was the, the point, that was the, the, drive, the driving factor in, in terms of here is the minister, this is probably not going to happen for you ever again in your life. Give it a shot. And I did. And um, <laughs> look, there's this concept of an elevator pitch. Yes. I literally had an elevator pitch because when the minister said, walk with me, um, he then went into the, the lift, lift yeah. to, to, to go up to his room. So yeah. I was there with the minister for uh, 45 seconds. And um, I, had to, I had to present my case, yeah. which I did. And um, eventually he gave me uh, 15 minutes of his time yeah. after that yeah. to just have a chat about what I thought could help um, uh, in, in, in alle alleviating some of the problems that we, we currently have. I think at that, at that point, the country was dealing with, a, with an outbreak of cholera um uh, and uh, so we just had conversations around that and how i thought um they might be able to use and leverage some of the resources that we already have in trying to 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 get rid of the problem let's get back to your um mba um you said one of the reasons you decided to do an mba was supposed to fill in that gap that you felt was missing given that you couldn't pursue your initial you know, interest into, into the accounting stream. Um, why did you decide to do it with Gibbs and not with VETS or any other university? Look, I, obviously when you are thinking of going on this journey, the first thing that you probably think about is um, where can I get the most value? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that, remember, it's a, it's a costly exercise in terms not only of the financial side, but also because of the time that you, yeah. you have to put in. Yeah. So you, all the time, trying to figure the best way to get um, that value and extract that value out of, out of whatever you, you put in. And um, look, um, at that time, and even currently, uh, Gibbs was rated as, um, and is rated as one of the best business schools in the world. Yeah. Right, it, it's, it's, it's repeatedly been sco scored as the, the best business school on the continent. So I think that was a big factor in, 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 in the decision to, to actually go there, which is a decision that I, um, I, I am grateful that I, 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 I made yeah. because, look, while I wanted to fulfill a desire to have an, an, an accounting knowledge and an accounting side. Yeah. I got a lot more out of the experience, yes, yeah. especially uh, given the caliber of people that I met, the conversations that we had during that, yeah. that, that, that journey, and the general experiences of, yeah. of being at Gibbs and, 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 and getting an opportunity to learn yeah. and, and impact something. For, for people who don't know what a business school is or how it runs, can you just unpack for us how different is a business school to a normal university? What, what was so different about the MBA that is not done in an undergrad or any other postgrad? The biggest thing for me, I think, I think what I would call the biggest differentiator would be there's a lot more learning from each other than, um, than you'd expect in an undergrad product, for example. Yes, there are technical concepts that you have to grasp, but I think you go through more of people's experiences and what they are dealing with in the, for lack of a better term, real world on a daily basis than what you get from the, from the textbook, which is an important factor because remember a business school is trying to get people into, with a certain sort of values into the business world so that we can have our, our, our our business impacting society in the way that we we wanted um, we wanted to. So I think that's that's for me that was the biggest uh, 
difference between the time that I was at the University of Zimbabwe doing an undergrad and when I was in business school, I actually learned a lot more, not from the person who was standing in front of the class, but from the class itself. Mm -hmm. So an MBA, uh, most would say, is a, you know, it's a qualification that trains people to be general managers or general leaders, have a broad understanding of, of the business landscape. Um, and talking about leadership, what, what does leadership mean for you? It's a, it's a wide construct, right? Um, leadership, I'm sure if we have a conversation with 10 different people, we're going to get 10 different definitions of, uh, of what leadership is. But for me, it's about appreciating the people that you have around you and um, using those people or getting value from those people and giving value to those people so that they can commit to a shared um, objective, a shared goal, yeah. so that you can walk that journey yeah. together and you are there to enable them to, to walk that journey and get to the objective while they are also meeting their own personal objectives on, on, that, on that journey. Yeah. So leadership for me is about getting it right with the people that, that you have, appreciating that they are not tools, they are not widgets. Um, they, they have their own goals, they have their own targets, they have their own objectives, and provide an environment where they can feel free to voice their opinions and make positive contributions um, while challenging me and challenging each other um, uh, uh, along the way. So inclusivity is a big thing for me when I'm working with my team or with um, any, other, any, any other team. If you feel that you are a part of whatever you're trying to achieve, then I think you have a lot more motivation to, uh, to put in even the extra effort and go the extra mile. Would you say then the MBA has helped you become a better leader? It has helped me become a better me, uh, firstly, because, I, like I said before, I got into the journey um, expecting some technical concept, to learn some technical concept, which I did. But I think above everything else, it was very insightful in terms of looking within, looking uh, inside and trying to figure myself out, which is something that I'm still um, doing and I do on a daily basis. But I think there was a lot of introspection within, within the MBA. So I think, yes, eventually it, 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 it then becomes about being a better leader. But I think above all, it was about being a better version of myself, understanding where my, short, uh, my, my shortcomings are, understanding where my strengths are, and also understanding that when people come to you and hold up the mirror and show you where your weaknesses are, they are not the enemy. They are there to empower and to, to improve you. So I think if you are sitting in a room with 70 other type A students, you, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of reflection. You get a lot of challenge in terms of what you can do better and what you actually need to stop doing. And with that in mind, what would you say that MBA experience has taught you about yourself? I found out how resilient I am um, during that time. But I think I also f found what's really important to me, which came out to be family. Because remember, I, I did say there's a lot of commitment, of time commitment that you have to, to put. I think um, I started the MBA when my firstborn was eight months old. And you get into the MBA, you get there, and you, your focus is, I want to get the grades, I want to get the results. Um, and then at some point it takes its toll, and you really have to look at all the balls that you're, you're juggling and then deciding which one is the crystal ball that you cannot, you cannot drop. And uh, it turned out, as it turned out, it was my family. So I think prioritization became uh, very important to me. Um, I learned that uh, on the MBA. I think I'm better at it now, and I'll, I'll try to get better as, 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 as we go. Um, it, has, it has filtered into my professional and my work environment. 
we, we have meetings in a day, you have to think about, do I really need to be on the table for this one um, or the other? Um, so that juggling of the things that you have to do and the prioritization really yeah. came through for me when I was doing the MBA because of the time constraints that, yeah, yeah. that, that it just poses on you. And talking about meetings in a day in a work setting, you are the head of risk governance at APSA. Um, and you've been in the company even before it was APSA, previously Barclays, yeah. Barclays Africa. Um, I want to just unpack that a little bit. Um, how have you managed to transition from a computer science uh, specialization to end up in risk governance? So I, I listen. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Listen, learn as much as you can and really figure what the organization is trying to do. So yes, my, my first job or my second job after, after my um, uh, internship was in a risk kind of role. So my initial job was I was an IT auditor at Deloitte. Um, in Zimbabwe, um, that was my my first job. So there was a there was a risk. Er, there's always been a risk element to my job, but the focus was mainly on on technology and IT. Okay. So, so for for me to make that transition, I had to figure what the business is trying to do. So for every business that I walked into. I needed to have an understanding of what are they trying to do. Mm. Their objective is not to have safer computer systems. Mm. Their objective is something else. The, this business was formed for a very specific purpose. So if you try and understand that, you will be in a position to make any transition because you then identify the gaps of the journey that the business is, is working and then you can plug yourself um, into it. So. I have worked in technology risk, I've worked in audit, I've worked in, in consulting. And the common thread has always been get to what the business is trying to do. What are the objectives yeah. of the business? Speak to the right people, listen, yeah. and, and they'll be able to teach you a lot. So, so, so trying to get to the crux of what um, the organization is trying to do in a, large, in a large organization can be quite a daunting task. Um, I hear you talking about listening and speaking to the right people. How do you identify who those people are? Look, I think everyone in a business setting, everyone in life, has something that they can give you and has something that they can actually teach you. So the first step is listen to everyone, okay. <laughs> right? Um, have conversations with people around you. Uh, be, be part of what they do and try and understand what they actually, what they actually do. Um, and at the same time, open yourselves, yourself up to, to, new, to new experiences. Yeah. So as you have conversations with people, you then figure that out of the 10 million things that I've learned, these are the two that I actually want to focus on. And then now you can start having specific conversations with people around you to say, this is the direction, this is the journey I want to walk. Mm -hmm. Who within this business would help me to walk, um, to walk that journey? And I think that's where some of these concepts like mentorship then do, coaching do then come in, um, where you can then have conversations with people who have walked the journey, who have the experience, who have had um, their, their fingers bent, uh, so to speak, who can then walk you through that journey. We'll come back to the men mentorship aspect in a little while. Um, so as, as the head of risk governance, yeah. what, what does your role entail? My job is um, to kind of guide and ensure and ensure the sustainability of a business. Okay. So most businesses are out there to make money to make profits. Mm -hmm. My role is to say, this is how we can do it sustainably yeah. in terms of we are not taking up risk that's 
too big for us to manage and to ensure that the organization will exist in the next 10, 20, or even, even, even 100 years. So my job for me is to say, when you thought about this, when you thought about how we could move our strategy forward, mm. did you also think about what could go wrong? Mm. And if you have, how, how much of it are we willing to take on? Mm. And how much of it can we mitigate or transfer to the next, to the next party in, in terms of how we manage our risk yeah. and how we take on uh, our business and move it forward?